So welcome back to this third module on innovative STEM teaching and how to use STEM resources from across Europe. I'm here with Xenia Loritsen. She has been working for European SchoolNet since April 2012, and she was also involved in the DESIRE project, which is an initiative that aimed to improve the way STEM resources are communicated to teachers. Yes, we're going to present you to DESIRE, which is a two-year research project that has been funded by the European Commission and that we have done in collaboration with other European partners. DESIRE is a project that's about linking new knowledge to teachers and new knowledge, by new knowledge we mean uh, new resources and new methodologies that can inspire you to better stimulate your students to study STEM. So in Europe we have a lot of projects that try to develop new knowledge in STEM education. The thing is that this knowledge is often not used in practice by teachers. So in, Desire, in the DESIRE project we have tried to find out how this process is actually uh, being done between accessing new knowledge for teachers. Uh, we have tried to talk with a lot of stakeholders to find out what the problem is and to find possible solutions. When starting the research, the first thing that we did is to reach an agreement on the definition of dissemination. And we decided to use the most global definition which is the process by which using a certain strategy, results are made available, comprehensible and usable by teachers. We've been looking at different, different models existing, starting from the most traditional one uh, and going until the, the most innovative models. So what differentiates these different models are the way the knowledge is being transferred. In the most traditional dissemination model, the knowledge remains intact, while in innovative model, the knowledge is being co-developed with the teachers and applied to the context of the teacher. So to carry on this research, we've been consulting the different stakeholders that are active in STEM education. So when project manager talked about reaching teachers, they mainly use websites or face-to-face -face strategy like conferences or participatory events. But when we talk to, when we talk to teachers, we notice that they also like to use other type of channels like social media or very brief document or emails because they have little spare time. So we noticed uh, a gap between the strategy used by project managers and the preferred channels of teachers. Another important part of our research shows that half of the stakeholders do have access to new knowledge. And here we talk both of policymakers, teachers and other project managers. But still an important part, 50% of teachers still feel they don't have enough access. And that is why it's important to focus on new ways of, uh, for teachers to gain access to this knowledge. The findings of our research carried out in the DESIRE project and the recommendations that we have formulated that are all gathered in one publication which is called the Reach Out Toolkit. So this toolkit has several objectives. Uh, first of all, we identified the obstacles that prevent the innovative STEM teaching methods from reaching teachers. We also uh, provide a number of uh, practical tips on how to improve the way this dissemination is done. And finally, we give tools to create a multiplier effect uh, when project managers are communicating to teachers. So one of the first challenges that was identified by the teachers that we have been uh, discussing with is that they have little time to look for new knowledge. Um, this is because they have to prepare the students for exams and they have to teach a specific curriculum. Uh, but it's important to prioritize new knowledge because it can actually make you save time. Because uh, many of the new resources and methodologies that are being developed focus on motivation and having motivated students can actually make them learn more efficiently. Another challenge that we identified with the desire 
research is the lack of involvement of the target audience. So basically, we noticed that to ensure the success of the dissemination, a good practice is to involve teachers as ambassador of this innovative practice. So as a teacher, you are the best place to talk to your peers and to colleagues. And you will be also the best place to convince your colleagues that uh, these methods are bringing an added value to their teaching and uh, will increase the interest of their students uh, towards STEM education. One more issue that we have identified with this research uh, in the DESIRE project is the underuse of already existing resources on networks. So basically there are plenty of networks existing in Europe for STEM education, but unfortunately teachers are not always using them. So we invite you to read the Reach Out Toolkit to find out about these networks and initiatives and to spread the word about them to your colleagues. Another challenge that has been identified by teachers is the lack of support in their own context. So basically, sometimes you as a teacher, you feel isolated uh, trying to use innovative STEM teaching. So what we want to recommend is to try to form a group in, at local level in your community. So for example, involving teachers from your schools or from other schools of your region. But you could also think about informing your headmaster or trying to involve some parent groups or researchers from local institutions or from universities. And this way you will feel that your effort to use innovative STEM education uh, is not isolated but taken in the community. What we mainly recommend is a wider involvement of teachers in, and to give an active role to teachers. And we would like to remind you that you, as a stakeholder in STEM education, you can make a difference and play an active role in the improvement of dissemination. In this video, we are going to tell about best practices shared by teachers on how to make a difference in the STEM education field. Yes. So during um, the Tessire project in the data collection phase, we talked with a lot of teachers all over Europe. And uh, they had a lot of good stories to tell about how they get inspired, how they inspire other teachers, and how they integrate innovation in the classroom. And we found out there's no one way, a uh, right way to do it, but there's many ways. And it all depends on the resources you have available in your community. So many teachers share their experience on how to motivate their peers, like how to involve their colleagues in European projects. And one good example was uh, an Irish teacher that decided to organize an event where he invited his colleagues and uh, an Irish MEP was invited to share his views on Europe and share some solid information on what Europe really brings to education sector, for example. So then the teacher that organized this event decided to explain his colleagues how taking part to European project can really bring an added value because uh, it's an opportunity to network with other teachers that are sharing the same passion for STEM teaching. We also ask uh, our teachers why they looked for alternative and innovative uh, teaching materials. And there are two main factors for this. One uh, is just the motivation of being able to teach uh, the curricula in many different ways so you don't repeat what you're saying year after year. Uh, another uh, good reason is that you can overcome a uh, lack of resources in your school by using online tools. Uh, we have examples of schools that only have one laboratory for 300 kids. And a good alternative to that is, for instance, to use online laboratories. Um, and we all know that in order to teach STEM, it's good to integrate um, experiments because it, uh, the students, they gain a profound understanding on the different kind of STEM subjects. So, as we said already many times, Europe, European projects uh, on STEM education are a very good way to access innovative STEM resources. But we discussed a lot with teachers what is possible at their level to get inspiration. And one good example is the collaboration with science centers. We have, for example, a teacher from Portugal that says that uh, the local science center is uh, organizing many times meetings with uh, scientists from Portugal or even abroad 
And it's uh, a very good way to uh, access the knowledge about uh, innovative science. Another teacher from Finland also uh, explained that the collaboration with the local science centers is very tight with the different schools. And in each school, there is a teacher that is in charge of uh, being in contact with the center and have all the information about exhibition and projects for schools. And so uh, teacher and students can attend these uh, different workshops and labs and have really hands-on uh, experience with STEM teaching. One of the other things we found out when we um, saw what teachers they, collab uh, they contributed with in our data collection process was uh, that teachers, they are good at uh, creating enthusiasm and motivation in their community and among other STEM teachers. For instance, we had a teacher from Israel uh, that uh, organized a science fair at her school, which motivated other schools in her community to create science fairs. And this way, they had a much greater participation at a regional level and a national level. And it also uh, motivated both parents and students and other STEM teachers to be more, more interested in an alternative way of teaching STEM. Uh, we also have an example uh, of a teacher from Italy that at her school with her uh, colleagues they created a theme day called Let's Do Physics. Uh, and here she um, motivated the students to do a different kind of experiments in physics and they invited the primary school or children over uh, to see the different kind of experiments and um, this way her students they actually um, gained some kind of understanding of um, all the things that they had learned during the school year. We also had a Finnish teacher telling us that at um, her mun municipality they, they have a rewarding of innovative teachers so each year they're given a prize and it can be teachers that has for instance participated in, in a European uh, project. Uh, we also had a teacher from uh, Croatia telling us that at her municipality they actually have an innovation council of teachers that are responsible for uh, disseminating um, innovative practices in school. Another dissemination channel that was uh, mentioned many times by the teacher that we uh, talked to in the DESIRE project are social media, of course. Uh, so. They mention the main social media that are used nowadays, like Facebook, Flickr, YouTube, Google, like the Google Cloud and uh, Moodle. Uh, and what was interesting is some example on, on how to best use this channel of dissemination to uh, communicate about STEM teaching and best practices. And so some examples uh, were brought, such as creating groups on this social media to talk about specific topics and shared views on uh, uh, one topic that interested the members of the group and not only being a passive user, just uh, accessing information. We also had a teacher that talked about uh, the way she communicated the result of uh, the work she does in class with her students and actually she created a group on WhatsApp and she's disseminating the result this way. And finally, another example is a teacher that disseminated the result of uh, her classroom activity through YouTube and she shared uh, this result to parents, to teachers and to students. And it uh, appears to be a very good way to get uh, all these people interested by the result of the work. So Midas just told us about the use of social media, which is quite popular. But there is actually also some teachers that still use the more traditional media like the television, the radio and the newspaper. For instance, we had a teacher from Estonia that told us that her local newspaper uh, dedicate one page each week to the municipality where teachers, they can, uh, publish, uh, teachers in schools can publish news and it can be like if the school won a prize or if they are participating in a European project or if they won uh, if they have invented something new. We also had a Portuguese teacher that told us that they actually have a school radio that they have uh, set up um, in collaboration with the local radio and this way they can disseminate uh, news out from the school to the whole community.
If you want to find more information about the Desire project, we invite you to visit the portal uh, at desire.eun.org where you will find the online version of the toolkit and more information about our research.